a new cycle of the structured dialogue have started. That meant giving the opportunity to stop up for a moment and openly map what is important to young people in Europe. Later on, more concrete actions and decisions will be made. So after this conference, a national consultation process will take place in each European member state. It will involve thousands of young people and contribute to that mapping process. More on that later. The conference participants have worked. They've worked hard. They've openly mapped, explored, discussed, and unfolded. And they have harvested their work. Youth researchers are right now cracking the data in service of the conference participants to bring forward their work to inform the guiding consultation questions for the coming national consultations. This is not ready yet, but yesterday a future festival took place. And I know we have a reporter in the field to give just a short glimpse of that future festival and how that unfolded. So, to you, Pirit. Thank you very much, David. Um, indeed, it's uh, been interesting to be on the field as a reporter. And uh, as you have kind of said in our first uh, news section, that uh, people have worked uh, very hard. So uh, it's a good pleasure to invite you a little journey, what has been the first kind of glimpse into the results of yesterday Future Festival. And for that, we need uh, all of our contribution. So uh, I'm inviting you after the morning news that just has been to take some time for reading. Indeed, that's a good sign for reading time. Uh, and we invite you to find this uh, web address, useconf.eu slash overview. So you can use your phones or your um, laptops. And uh, I said before that Future Festival took place yesterday. People were uh, digging deeper into the conversation that matter. And indeed, researchers have been done work uh, condensing it. And later on, we will hear more what has come up from that. But just for you to know uh, what has been happening behind the scenes, we put together a very short overview. So it's a kind of a raw material. We took some of the elements of the harvest sheet, and uh, you could be able to access it now on this uh, uh, overview page. So what we invite you to do is actually to scroll it through, see what is there at the moment, and also talk to your neighbor if you have come to an end, uh, what you notice on this overview fall. So we take let's say seven, eight minutes for that. Maybe, uh, do we get some music? What do you think on the back? A bit silent music, maybe? Maybe a little silent music at the back. Let's see what the musicians can create. We have some musicians always with us, right? Always at the Always moment. at the right. So, is it working there? The, uh, everybody's so condensed into hope it works. Some music and take time to read and talk to your neighbor what you notice on this overview page.
think with this little tone, we can uh, put a comma for reading, and you can uh, read uh, at the airport uh, while uh, waiting for the plane home, for example. It might take uh, some time today. But it's also interesting to see what else is happening in the field. And I know uh, Thea will shortly have some visitors uh, joining you as well. But before that, uh, let's see uh, what is happening in the crowd as well regarding the first glimpse of uh, yesterday's Future Festival result. Would you like to continue? Yes. Um, do you want to share what you have noticed? You read some things in the breaking news newspaper online. Who would like to take a stand and just share with us? What, what did you see? Anything interesting? Not so much? Still reading? If you want to share something, the volunteers are in the field there with you, so they can approach you very fast and just gather some thoughts from your side as well. Too early, right? I understand, yeah. but yes. definitely not for our speakers yes. or our special guests that's we, that we want to bring into our studio. So I would uh, kindly invite Davide from Partnership to join us here. Uh, he's one of the keynote listeners and he has been walking around listening carefully what you are discussing. Then also we have here Karina as the chair of the European Steering Committee. Uh, she has also been paying a lot of attention um, to see what what, the, the, what are the things important for you. And we have Mihai here as well. Mihai is it's coming from Romania. And Romania is the first country in the next uh, trio presidency. So you have one year and a half, and you're already preparing for your presidency, right? Uh, and also, Kristen will join us uh, to share with us what has been happening through the engagement with the outside world, through social media, tweet, Instagram, pictures, Facebook comments, and so on. So yesterday, we finished the Future Festival. Participants have been working on the topics they found relevant. What, what did you notice? How, what was the process? What were the topics popping up? Thank you, Thea. Uh, first of all, I hope that now those two persons who looked me very suspicious when yesterday I was sitting behind them listening to them understood why I was doing it. Uh, I would like to start from uh, uh, a sentence that really struck my attention yesterday from Gustav, when we said that young people today are asked more and more of taking care of themselves. And uh, um, it really um, puzzled me because um, of course, taking care of themselves, mm, guiding young people to find their ways in the, in the world is uh, uh, the, one of the primary purposes of youth policy. But of course, there are a lot of drawbacks. And uh, this is the thing, is the connecting uh, wire, the fil rouge that accompanied uh, uh, what I was listening yesterday. I heard uh, uh, that, young, that young people are uh, increasingly under pressure, that are not enabled to participate they receive less and less support from traditional forms of social, um, social support, like uh, church, families, or traditional political parties, more and more under strain for finding a job, more flexibility. Um, there's this fear of missing out, FOMO. Internet is there as an opportunity, but also full of threats, and uh, as a infinite source of uh, inspiration, but also as an infinite source of, uh, of pressure. I heard a lot about environmental risks and uh, the idea that the uh, current generations are stealing the future of the planet from the next generations, difficulties in having a family, um, anxiety, and uh, um, more complexity in finding their position in the society and to understand their sense of belonging and their identity. Mm, which also leads to uh, the appeal of some, some extremist parties and, uh, um, and uh, uh, populist groups. So, I also heard a lot of positive solutions. So, that is, this, this is the ambivalent of the idea of taking care of themselves. I also heard from many participants interesting solutions and uh, a lot of enthusiasm also for the opportunities that these challenges entail. Um, more, Many of them are already, are already present in the, uh, in the tablet. I, don't, I won't mention them. We talked a lot about, they talked a lot about co-management or uh, different policy uh, programs that are involving young people directly, more knowledge-based, uh, and more opportunities for young people to provide feedback on the different policies that are involving them. 
but especially more personalized support in front of a fragmented society in which every individual is asked to take care of themselves for good or bad, there should be a more tailor-made personalized support and opportunities of direct engagement from young people. This is in a nutshell what I try to listen. In Thank this you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Davide. Karina, what are your thoughts on the whole process that we went through from Monday when we met in the evening through the Future Festival till now? What have you noticed? Um, yeah, good morning. Um, I think it has been like um, three very busy days, very interactive, very um, inspiring. Um, I also had the chance like to uh, mingle like with different groups um, here at the venue, but also like uh, around dinner uh, at breakfast time to also like hear a bit what are the topics that are, you know, like burning issues um, for you here at the conference. Um, and it was very exciting to hear that there was such a broad diversity um, of topics. Like yesterday, um, I joined a group um, who was talking about uh, strong youth organizations, the importance of like also creating a physical space where young people can um, gather, but also uh, structural possibilities for young people like to engage in uh, decision making and so on. Um, I've also joined a group um, that was talking about mental health. I think that is still like a very new topic uh, when it comes to, to young people. It's becoming more and more um, present also. And this group was also focusing not only on, on young people themselves who already um, suffer from um, mental illnesses, but also like on, on young people on a broader scope, also like to highlight um, that it's a cross-cutting issue and it, it's also like um, relevant for, for a lot of topics. It's like, you know, like it's linked with employment, it's linked with the labor market, um, it's linked like with the school system and so on. So this was also like um, very interesting. But I think it's also very relevant to highlight that as we have seen like this broad diversity of topics, it also shows that young people are also like interested and also affected by a lot of different um, issues. I was also like um, screening quickly um, through the overview right now. And I mean, we've discussed also about rural areas. Um, we discussed about the environment. We discussed about uh, migration and so on. And I think this is a really signal also like to involve young people in issues that might not appear like, you know, like as youth policy issues um, that directly, I think this is a, a very broad as well. Um, and also another aspect that I would like to highlight is that I'm really uh, thankful for the efforts of the uh, Estonians to also bring here um, young people from non-EU countries and also like to bring here uh, also this uh, other perspective and I think it's also like very important um, to have like a very broad diversity of, of different voices so this was also I think like very welcoming for this entire process. Thank you. Mihai, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Do we have something to build upon? Yes, actually, I think we have very much to build upon. Uh, and good morning. I was uh, very happy to see that we are all um, thinking about uh, different issues, cross-sectorial, cross-level, from local level, rural, urban, to European and to global issues also. Uh, and about this and speaking the unspoken, which you mm -hmm. <laughs> mandated us to do, uh, I also noticed a discussion that was not so mainstream regarding the capacity, the institutional capacity of public authorities to address youth issues and also the role of uh, uh, youth in uh, general policy making in government and authorities at different level of decision making. Uh, and about this, some ministry said we are like, I don't know, uh, four people in an office uh, while others have a minister that is also, you know, full minister of, uh, or a minister of youth and sports usually that uh, takes care of this side. So I think we should also have that in mind. If you want to be effective, we need to have proper resources and proper influence of decision making makers dealing with youth within the general policy. Um, I attended yesterday the workshop on youth participation. There were some really interesting discussions, for example, on how we could use gamification in order to encourage participation. Also, somebody was saying that if you build a new platform, it's very hard to get young people in. So uh, we should try to find out what the platforms that young people use R and try to get associated with those platforms in a way. And about this, they also suggested we should get 
private uh, actors engaged in the discussion about how we can encourage youth participation as well, such as, I don't know, uh, Facebook or others. And somebody even said that uh, we are a bit delayed even if you try to be online aware, uh, meaning that when we start using Facebook, uh, the youngest uh, of youth are already using Snapchat or other platforms, uh, and we should be careful to be up to date. Uh, last but not least, I think it's important to speak about communities that don't really relate to the general society they are part of, uh, either because they're ethnic groups or because they have other kinds of cultural differences, and we need to make sure that they are also uh, part of participation that, that we address their needs. Thank you. Thank you very much. And yes, indeed, talking about reaching out and using social media as well. Kristen, what have you noticed? Uh, what were the people who weren't necessarily present here at the conference with us messaging to us? What did they say? What, what, what's important for them? Uh, yeah, I put actually a couple of tweets for you on the screen as well. Um, actually, now we even see a repetition of Karina's point, but see, I didn't know this <laughs> in advance. Uh, but uh, great anyway. Um, yeah, so you can see some of the thoughts on the screen here. Um, and uh, I'm not going to read out the slides because that's boring, right? But uh, maybe if we go to the uh, next one, there's an interesting conversation maybe that I want to highlight that uh, happened online. Um, here with, uh, with Ulien from the Estonian Permrep, who is currently the uh, chair of the Youth Working Party, and Luis uh, Alvarado Martinez, the president of the European Youth Forum. Uh, they, there's a, there was a conversation started on Twitter based on what was going on here in the conference. Um, and then they thought, hey, let's film this, let's talk, let's discuss more, let's bring this to everybody. Uh, and we did that, we put a video up, it's on Facebook, you can all go see it. Uh, maybe when you're on your way home, there's all always this airport time but fascinating conversation a great takeaway even for me personally from the conversation uh, con from this conference um, so very very interesting things were happening on social media I would say and I think it's super important that you know all these tweets everything that we do we share uh, we actually look at them and we take uh, things from them and we include them uh, in what was happening in this conference and we take it like yes this was an essential part this participation there is also important um, and we need to take it forward. And I uh, really invite you to keep doing this in this uh, structured dialogue process now that we go forward. Uh, use social media, um, bring it along, and uh, uh, keep the conversation going there because we have this space still uh, that we can keep using uh, not only here, but to engage with each other uh, even afterwards. So. Thank you, thank you very much for this recommendation and advice as well. So you as a keynote listeners, you're going to actually continue sharing these views, impressions that you got, and you're going to help researchers also today in the afternoon, because this is going to fit into the process of creating guiding questions, right? So um, don't lose your notes, uh, share it also with us in the afternoon where we're going to sit on computers working on this, and thank you for now for joining our studio in the morning news. <laughs> but we do have another guest coming, um, the hottest news, breaking news. I would like to invite uh, Dan, the researcher, uh, to join us here and share the latest news. So what has been happening? What are the future steps? You know that we have another researcher, Undras, He's still working. Night has been long for you then, right? Maybe not as long as some of the people at the party, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so where are you? You saw the input that all the groups share with you. Um, we saw that you got like more than 20 feedbacks? Or yeah. How many were there? Well, first of all, I really just want to say thank you to the facilitators and to everyone who filled in the harvesting tool and all the conversations that people took part in yesterday because it was so clear to us that what came out, what we captured, what we harvested was absolutely incredible. There was such a breadth of information, there was a huge different range of discussions, some really detailed and fantastic ideas. It was really so much more than we ever thought would be possible to come from a conference like this. So we had maybe, I think around 20 responses in total. Um, we've been sort of making links between them, joining them all together. We really had so much brilliant information captured and recorded. It really went so well. So you would say you gather enough 
data, enough information to really map what is important for young people, what are the topics that we should address in the future? Absolutely, absolutely. We can see that there are big topics that are coming from the themes of the discussions, but we can see how those links are made between them. Um, men mental health was mentioned earlier. I mm -hmm. think that's a really good one to explain what we mean. So we could see there was one group talking about mental health and what support young people need around mental health issues. But we could also see in the other groups, things like the group that was thinking about fake news and disinformation, they were talking about the impact that had on young people's mental health. Or the youth unemployment group were talking about what effect being unemployed had on young people. And that was very much a mental health issue as well. So we can make links between all of mm -hmm. the different discussions and see what the big headlines are. Okay, very good. But we know that this is just first step of the broader process, right? We gathered here, we map all those topics, but of course we didn't come up with the solutions, with recommendation. This is all still in front of us. And maybe not so close. I mean, we have a couple of steps to do after the conference, right? What, what's ahead of us? Absolutely, absolutely. So what happens next is we'll create all of those themes, define them, make it sure that it's really clear that we've got a good description of what everyone was talking about. And then we'll work with the national working groups and the European Steering Committee to design a set of consultation questions so that those questions can be used to ask other young people to join in in the same discussions. So taking forward again mental health as an example, one of the questions, and please this is just an example, we've still got to do this mm. work yet, might be asking what sort of support do young people want around mental health from youth organisations. Then we'll work with the national working groups to run their consultations and the European youth organisations as well to gather that information back from young people. And this will take place, I think we're starting early November and it will last until about February time. Then coming into February, what we'll do, we'll get the reports back from each of the national working groups and it's my job and Andras's job to then summarise all of that together, to bring that back together and make sure that we start the next conference with a really huge and wide range of input from young people based entirely on the themes that we've set yesterday, mm -hmm. based entirely on the discussions you've started here today, so that at the next conference we can go forward and say, okay, how do we solve these things? Okay, and you're staying with us throughout the whole process, right? Absolutely, we'll be here all the way with you till the end, and if you like us, maybe even next year, <laughs> next time as well. Um, and so we're going to make sure that the whole thing has a really clear chain of thought, that everyone gets the information they need. And, and the other thing I should mention as well, a lot of people have said to us, oh, can we see your research findings? Can we see your research report? And it's really important to stress our role is mainly about helping design the consultation. The key report that comes back will be around the end of the consultation. But we really know that people here also want to see, well, let, let's get a good catalogue of these methods. We've got the news, news desk item we showed earlier, but we know we had a very short amount of time to pull that together. So actually, we were talking to the Estonian government earlier today, and we want to work with them to create a short newsletter to come from this conference, mm -hmm. so that whatever's discussed directly here isn't lost as well. Because we've really captured absolutely everything, so it's just a case of feeding that back out to people to close the loop. And basically, the main outcome is going to be the guiding questions that are coming uh, out next week, basically, or absolutely, in a couple of days. Yeah. yeah, so we're presenting the guiding questions to the European Steering Committee on Monday, and then hopefully very shortly after that, they'll be able to come out. Okay, thank you very much for this latest news. So we all know that, yeah, today and throughout the conference, we made first steps to map the topics, to see what we want to address in the future. And then the next step is actually to run the consultations, um, to engage more young people, to hear their voices. And based on this, we're going to continue our work in the next uh, conferences in Bulgaria. Absolutely, that's completely correct. And we, I'd really just again like to thank everyone, because we know this has been a new process. The facilitators, I think, have done a brilliant job helping you through that process. So really, we know it's different for some people, but thank you so much for all the effort and the hard work you've put in. We can really see how it's paying off. You've done some absolutely fantastic work here the last two days. Thank you very much for your work as well. Uh, thank you. Say uh, hi to Andros as well, and you can go back to um, analyzing the data, <laughs> and we get back to you soon. Thank you very much. Um, so this was all from our um, very important guests, and back to you, David and Piret. Yes. So it's about time to uh, close the Future Festival, and then uh, we still have quite some program for this morning, right? Yeah, yeah. Indeed, of course, we have uh, great opportunities to still mingle, talk, meet some maybe new people. I've seen that 
it seems that there are some new people in the house. Yes. We'll indeed. also have a guest later, right? We have a guest coming. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, the you know weather him? conditions are supporting us, and the uh, commissioner should be uh, landing soon and joining us. And I think it's also connected with a little invitation that uh, we would like to engage you also with our uh, discussion later with the uh, commissioner. Mr. Dibor Navracis uh, is joining us. So if you have a question for him, then uh, tweet it. Uh, so that we can also engage it uh, later into our uh, little discussion with, with him. So he's joining us. So just after coffee break, be, be back. So he has a little speech for us, and then we have a chance to ask a few questions as well. Be uh, concrete and precise, and use this time uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, indeed. So a little bit of that, and of course, I've heard that uh, we should be like also handling over the the conference, so there will be some something around it. So st stay tuned, I would <laughs> say. Indeed, indeed. So maybe we're also going to have a look at what we have been through. What have happened the last days? Well, now we dig into the Future Festival, but also just getting an overview of the time here together. Yeah. Let's take a peek. Part of this uh, field is also looking at what has been uh, captured. Oh. No, it's not this one. No, 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 no. You want the video? Maybe a video first. The most pressing um, issue for youth in Denmark is probably uh, equal access to education and employment. In Lithuania, it could be the mental health. Uh, the most um, burning issue in my country is now the youth unemployment, because youth in Georgia don't have opportunity to get involved and get working places. I would say that mental health is a very burning issue in, in Sweden. Uh, a lot of people suffer from uh, stress and depression, and I think it's very important to to work with that. When speaking about political participation and involvement of youths, not all groups are covered. I don't know, hairstyles, no. Uh, I think the most burning youth issue in Latvia is really good ways to, for young people to say their opinions and to be heard by the politicians. The most burning issue at the moment is to equip young people to be able to express themselves more freely about the situation and what is going on around us. How we increase young people's democratic participation, both in and outside of elections. Uh, if I was having a conversation about the future of Europe, uh, the theme of the conversation would be making sure that everyone is at the table. So, kind of a self-aware conversation, realizing that most of the time these conversations exist in an echo chamber. And what we really need to do is we need to get out and engage with people who are on the ground in Europe and uh, break out of that bubble. Really, the most important topic on the, the agenda should be preparing youth properly for our future, uh, both in terms of education and job-wise, because we are not only the future leaders of the world, but we are the future everything of the world. And so if we are not prepared, then our future will not be prepared. So this uh, video has been created by our social, social media team, social team as well, social media team. So uh, if any of the social team members are in the, are in the house, can you please maybe stand up or wave and so that we can actually give a new applause to you? Or you are already making a next video. <laughs> it too tired so. of uh, sitting online making <laughs> <Yes>. a video. <laughs> yes, but, but uh, Kristen and her team has been behind it. And we also want to say that actually there will be another short video um, um, coming out, uh, which uh, we will share later as well. Uh, 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 on social video. media, like after movie. Exactly. So uh, to we have different uh, teams working because, of course, everybody wants to make their own best movie. But but that was good enough. No, it's very good. Very good. <laughs> it's a very good start. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we see, we saw a lot of words, a lot of topics popping up, and uh, we would like to ask you to still share with us, like, 
what would be the key word that would describe this conference. So we would like to invite you to take your phones, tablets, um, laptops, whatever you have, because you know that we are in digital area. Uh, we can use this as well. And we're going to create something together um, through digital tools that we can have. So we're going to create a word cloud. So you really have to think of only one word that actually describe this conference. If you could say only one word, what would this be? So please go on the website of the um, of the website of this presidency. Uh, Maybe we can quickly have it back on so you can yeah. see the link. Slash word. Youthconf EU slash word. Um, so there you will find a place where you can type in your word. Uh, as said, it can only be one. Uh, let's try it out and let's see if we have the same opinion about, about it. Hopefully it's uh, also diverse. Yeah, and that's true as well. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, let's see how broad the cloud is going to be. It is quite a cloud anyway today, so um, yeah. let's uh, see what pops up uh, with uh, like this. What do you think? What is a one word? What is it? The first one. The first one is going to be um, youth. No, too obvious. Okay. I'm as soon as you write it and confirm it, it should pop up. So we're going to see how words are popping up. I don't know. Where's my phone? Da -da -da. Let's do it. Let's do it all together. Okay, if you still haven't done it, you can still do it. We will see how your word is um, popping up on the screen. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, that's a new word. Euroscussion, er 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 I don't know, like even how to pronounce it. Euroscussion. Er Euroscussion. Mm -hmm. Eurovision, Euroscussion. Euroscussion. Futuristic. Already there, but yes. is, like, is, like, like, what is your word? What is yeah. your word, David? What the is your larger word? the word is reading, uh, the more um, the more people actually put this word in it. So, okay, uh, apparently a lot of people agree. More women, wow, and participation in Europe and inspiring. Yeah, the weather has been arranged oh. also very well, like... And peaceful love, or just peaceful and love, <laughs> separate. <laughs> yeah. Hardcore. You see, so... Somebody also wants to share that you can hack this. <laughs> okay, so we see a lot of words, a lot of impressions, and we are curious uh, to hear more from you. So if you have been mostly typing now, now we really want to ask you to share with your neighbor what is one thing that you are taking home in order to share this in your context. 
We know that you're coming from different backgrounds. Some of you are working in youth organizations, maybe at local, national, or international level. Some of you are coming from the ministries or official departments where you are addressing the youth topics. Some of you are coming from different institutions. And we really want to see like, if you get something from this conference to take home and to bring it into your environment. So I would like to invite you to share this with your neighbors, or you can even turn around and maybe talk with somebody else. Um, and then we are going to collect some of the thoughts to see what could be useful to bring home as well. So I think we might be able to have uh, actually um, the question on. Yep. Coming now. And later, I'm sure we can uh, take a big look in this uh, wall as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, turn around, share with your neighbor, and we're going to hear a few words from you as well. Our volunteers are eager to go around and uh, use the mic. So the floor is yours. How many minutes? One. Our next release, suffering and smiling. Yeah, are you ready to share? Do you have some things to take home to bring it to your context? Is there anything like this? If you do want to share, we have volunteers who are ready in the room in order um, to come to and approach you when you raise your hand. For me, it's quite hard to see who is raising your hand, but yeah. yeah. Uh, who, 
Who is bringing something to the context where you're working? Yeah, here? Ah, there as well. Yeah, go ahead. We'll come to you. Hello, um, Jörn from Denmark. Uh, we talked uh, about that, um, that it was very interesting to hear about a lot of topics that um, I as an individual or maybe most of you others, um, we, we focus on one thing or two things in our countries and our organizations, but, uh, but now uh, it was possible to grasp how many other topics are out there uh, thriving the youth. So bringing that interest for these different topics home, that's something I will do. Okay, thank you very much for sharing. We have uh, here somebody as well who wants to share? Here? Thank you. Um, can you maybe just stand up? Yeah. Uh, yes, Thanks. sure. I'm definitely taking home the wider range of topics that we should address, and I'll find ways to engage uh, member organizations and partners about it, and uh, the methods from the conference, which I will definitely be interested in applying at some point and see if you really allow people to create their own ideas and subjects, what comes out of such an event. Thank you. Thank you. Also in the back, and there are some more hands popping up. Yeah? Hello, Mark Taylor, uh, Coyote Magazine. Uh, actually, two things. One is the incredible power of open space, with people really taking the responsibility into their own hands about what they want to speak about and what they don't want to speak about. Um, and the second thing is, Iris hugged me and called me bro. <laughs> it was unbelievable for an old fat man like me. Thank you very much for sharing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll get back to you as well. There are some more hands. Please, uh, yeah, just raise your hands up high so the volunteers can see it as well. Yes, yes, yes. Here, um, here, here. Yes. Hello, Anja from Slovenia. Um, I'm going to take home um, the fact that there are this variety of young people taking care of interests of other people. So I'd really like to share with my friends and people I know that there are people in Europe that are taking care of their interests and that they have to be engaged a bit more and that they also have to give something back to all of us who are taking care that um, their issues are also taken care of. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, maybe some inputs from that side, yeah? Hi, I'm Lucy from the UK. Um, I think if I was to go home and talk about this conference, the biggest thing I'd take away from it is um, the diversity of the people here. Because it's one thing to know that there's 28 EU countries and then you have the Eastern Partnership countries as well, but that it's quite another to come to a conference and actually get to talk and see and like network with people from all different countries and different backgrounds, speaking different languages, and I think that was really amazing. Thank you. I think there's a hand over here. Was yes. No? Where? No? There and there. Yeah. Can you? And maybe, yeah. Hi, I'm Nengi from Ireland. I think one thing that really struck me that I'll be taking home is um, just the feeling of seeing the president yesterday. To me, it speaks a lot. It just shows that the people on top of power actually care about the young people and they want to make a difference. So I'll be telling my colleagues back in Ireland that their voice really matters and there are people who really care and everything that they have said has been taken into consideration. Thank you. Yeah. I think we heard a lot of great things. And I want to thank everyone of, for, of you about all the great things that you said. I think the most important thing is that we spread all the things that we said during this conference among a widest audience as possible, like a very broad audience. Not only our friends or the people that we know or the people in our organization, but all the other young people in our countries. It's so important, so please do this. Thank you. Thank you. Some more hands up there, there, and... Okay, yeah? Well, um, Panayotis from Youth for Exchange and Understanding. I really like the collaboration between decision makers and staff, uh, public servants, uh, local organizations, national organizations, and European level organizations sitting on the same uh, group and discussing all different ways and highlighting the need of member states to collaborate between them, but all of us as well to take this chance and go back home and find opportunities to involve vulnerable groups, to involve people that they're not here today. However, they are represented through us. And I find it this very important and very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. 
some more comments. Hello, everyone. Mila from, from Serbia, from the National Youth Council. Uh, the thing that I'm taking definitely home is um, the inspiration I got from this whole new concept of, uh, of the structured dialogue um, consultation. And the thing is um, uh, what I would like to, uh, you to, to remember and to take you with home uh, to home is that no one should be left behind. So try to engage everyone, try to reach out to everyone. Um, and um, also like the member states, the non-EU countries, the Eastern partnership. So everyone should be involved regardless of whether they have the national working groups or not, because everyone is doing their best to engage everyone. And uh, yeah, as I said, no one should be left behind. But thank you. Thank you very much. Here as well, in the first row, Uh, my name is Irina, I'm from Ukraine, and I'd like to share my um, attitude, my experience being here. And you know, uh, for me, as Ukrainian representative, first of all, it was a great honor to be a participant. Uh, and uh, as for me, it was like a great, great opportunity to uh, study and learn lots of uh, things. Uh, first of all, starting from the way how the confer uh, conference, uh, this dialogue was organized, because for us it was something New, new way of uh, providing discussion among um, high-level representatives from ministers and from uh, with young people. And uh, the way how this cooperation works is really great and inspiring. And you know, uh, lots of young people from our countries, Ukraine and other Eastern neighborhood countries, are following us. Uh, they are reading our posts, our comments, our like photos, uh, videos, and they are already writing us lots of questions about, they want to know details, they also want to be involved and the, it's really great and inspiring. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes? Last um, comments? Yes, go okay, ahead. Last one. So just I wanted to say that a strict dialogue is not just a youth conference and that of course there are a lot of things to take home but the quality of what we will do here in this conference and next depends a lot on how we adapt, how we take all of this at national level, how we bring other people around of us at national level. And this is, I would say, even more important than the conference itself. And mm -hmm. it's something that we have to think about when we go home. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for this feedback. Uh, I think each of us can find something to really take home. Maybe a positive thing, maybe a criticism as well. Maybe you saw some things you didn't like and for sure you're going to do it differently in your country. Uh, but we heard some inspiring words as well. How to enlarge the space, how to make sure that we don't leave anybody behind, how to really put an, another effort to include people who maybe haven't been included before. And this was one of the ideas of this conference as well. So the, upon the initiative of the Estonian presidency, for the first time, six young people from the Eastern Partnership countries, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Georgia, Republic of Moldova, and Ukraine, were invited to participate at European Youth Conference. Um, these young people are part of the Youth European Ambassador Initiative that has been set up to strengthen and the interaction between the countries of the Eastern Partnership and EU. So I would like to invite to join me here, uh, Georgie. Yes, please. It's a great pleasure having you here. So could you please tell us more about the initiative? What have you been doing? How does your network look like? Uh, first First of all, it is a great honor to be here because this is the first time when the Eastern European countries yeah, are involved in the structured dialogue. This is the first time that we can like encourage really and have some hope that the voice of the young Europeans from the Eastern countries could get more and more power in you. We are also thinking that our system and our society is getting more and more power like in our countries because there are so many people who want, into, and who want to be involved. Nowadays we are more than 100 people in our society and European ambassadors and our count is going even up and up. This is the main reason what we are want. You can even come and see in our country there are feelings, there are all the, all the great feelings about the European Union. They have great information because of the help of us and they will have even more information. 
and we heard that you're doing a quite an amazing work back in your country. You were preparing a lot for coming here, right? And you were already reaching out to young people. You did a campaign on social media, if yeah. I'm right. Yeah, we yeah? did the campaign. It, it was the what would you say to the young people, young European people, if you have one opportunity. And there was two people. First of all, it was Luis Zine Zakarashvili from Armenia. He, she wrote it so wonderful. She got so many likes on her Facebook, social media. There's Should we have a look? Yeah, should we have a look? Yeah. We made a look. Ah. <laughs> okay. okay, that's her, right? Yeah, that's Luisina. Luisina, she's from Armenia. This is wonderful code. He had 95 likes on his Facebook, well, his Facebook, uh, Facebook mm -hmm. page. And so many people from Armenia want to join in social, young European ambassadors because of this. <laughs> there are so many people, for not from only Armenia, he is so po she is so popular in their country that so many people were involved here. Also, there is another person from Ukraine, this is Konstantin Kremuchki. He wants to be involved in here. He made so thoughtful um, code here. He wanted to be involved. He is like making it so many, like there is even my comment. I didn't know this person, but I read it and I was like feeling so happy for this, that people from another countries want to be involved in this. What to say is this is a great honor to be a young European ambassador and to be part in the structured dialogue in this year. Yeah, because you are indeed a very good example of how all of us can engage more, how we can actually reach out to young people, how we can use technology, social media, digitalization. And you also share a little bit what you're taking home as well. What would you say is the best added value or what is the most important for you? What are you taking home? As in my organization, I want to take like e-elections mm -hmm. because this is the best thing that I saw in Estonia, also the cuisine. This is wonderful, I liked it so much. Uh, uh, also, like when we were discussing some issues, like this was wonderful because uh, as an Eastern Partnership country, I did not face the same issues like in the EU. I was thinking that you people, young youngsters, don't have the same issues like uh, young people from Eastern Partnership countries. We have like the same problems, we have same values, and we want to work together. As I realized in the studies, but I want to take e elections. This is wonderful. This will help e Eastern Partnership so much. Thank you very much. And I did, I agree. I hope that we will work together in the future as well. Thank you. And also, I'm sure that you were all aware that we also have some other special guests here being present throughout the conference. It was a, a group um, of Coyote magazine. So I would like to invite uh, Mark Taylor to join me here. Yes, still in the room? No? Ah, yes. <laughs> Bringing your instrument. It's difficult not to. I know, I know. Uh, but let's focus maybe more on the magazine. We all know that Coyote magazine, um, it's a magazine about important issues in youth work in Europe. Um, what could you say that uh, we can expect from the next edition? What, what, what are you taking from this conference? Are we taking oh, no, it, it, it? It will work. Just it will work. Yeah, okay, yeah. Really mm -hmm. good. Yes. Very nice. Well, first of all, to say that Coyote magazine has changed a lot over the, over the years. Um, we used to have a wonderful, beautiful paper edition, um, but now we're just completely online. Mm. We're just di digital children. It's quite amazing, really. Um, from last Friday, um, the website was put online, and we started with the edition at the moment that's being uploaded is about um, democratic citizenship mm -hmm. and education for. And let's have a look and see what uh, organizations, like the organizations that are present here, are doing um, to defend human rights and to actually fight for them. Mm -hmm. um, for this conference, uh, we are particularly looking at the whole digital side of mm -hmm. communications between people and how we, can, um, yeah, how we can get a vision of the future. Okay, so you're kind of investigating uh, what is smart youth work as well, and you're going to include this as well? Did you get some good examples? 
oh, here yes. at the conference. Oh, yes. Yeah? Yes, 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 yes. A lot yes. of material to write oh, about. Loads and loads and loads already, yes. Indeed. Okay. Thank um, you very much. And we will be, we will be um, going online with that uh, early in the new year. Early New Year, okay, yeah. so you have to stay tuned, you have to check uh, when maybe also your practices are going to be written in the next edition of the Coyote magazine, right? Yeah, and thank you very, very much to the organizers of this conference for inviting us here and really doing everything possible that they could to make our work work. Thank you, thank you uh, for being here. We will follow the new edition, the new magazine. Um, so yeah, we see that there have been several different actors, stakeholders present here um, and that all of us, yeah, we are taking something home. Um, but before we go home, we still have some more things to do. David, what's next? So what's next here? That's a good question. And I think we have some uh, very good people in the room to answer that question. Um, in a minute, I will uh, invite two people on stage, going from one presidency uh, to the other, from the like the hosting sites, uh, and we have the question to them: What is next in this uh, cycle? So I would like you, uh, Uli, N, to enter the stage. <clears throat> and Peter Maltino. Have a seat. I'll bring you that. So the reason for inviting specifically the two of you to the States is that you have been a huge part of uh, organizing this uh, conference from, uh, from the, the Estonian host site, being a part of the Estonian presidency. And um, Peter, you are got a part of the Bul Bulgarian presidency taking over for the next conference in Sofia. Um, so we just want to hear from your side what is, uh, what is the link from like, being at the beginning of this cycle, linking into the, to the next step. But before we do that, I want to start asking you, before people got the question, what do you take home? So, uh, Uli, what do you take home from this conference? Hi, hi, everyone. <laughs> Someone had a party last night. <laughs> or oh, a lot of work. We also have parties in the council, you know. We have every, every almost every month several youth working parties in the council happening so uh, indeed uh, I apologize first for my voice so it's probably a also symbolic sign that uh, the time is moving there's not much for the Estonians to say anymore in this process we are moving towards the next stages what I take home uh, with me is um, Indeed, there are a lot of things. We, we saw the word cloud. Um, and sure, we will work on, on the things, on the topic, on the contents, to see how we can develop the process as such. But what I like uh, to take home with me is the feeling from here. I think this is, uh, we are in an old uh, power station. And for me, this is the engine of this dialogue and this process. And I hope that I don't forget the feeling from the days here. And. I wish you would have the same, that we can think back of the moments. Some of them have been uh, very frustrating, some of them a little bit uncomfortable, but a lot of it has been very, very exciting. And I see one of the colleagues now showing the sign of the heart to me. Thank you, I love you too. <laughs> Let's remember that moment in a way. Thank you very much, Uli. And Peter? Definitely joining uh, what Uli said, but uh, I also feeling quite inspired that uh, this is one, was one of the words in the word cloud. Because, I mean, for the past three days, all these young people, together with the representatives from the different institutions, actually work together. And this is the heart of the structure dialogues, really bringing everyone together and discussing the future of Europe. And definitely, I see a bright future uh, with all these amazing young people who will be really leading uh, our European Union to the best shape that it could be in the, in the next uh, 10, 20 years. And uh, in the same time, a bit of a challenge for our conference because the, our amazing Estonian friends actually put the, uh, the level so high. So hopefully we're going to reach at least the, the, the same level or hopefully more. So you feel some expectations on your shoulders. Exactly. I, ha I have full trust in that. Thank you. 
Yeah, give them a hand. I just uh, put up the overview of the structured dialogue process for this six uh, cycle that uh, Thea also showed just uh, two days ago in the, in the morning to see at the moment we're in uh, we're still in in phase one uh, with this uh, talent conference and moving towards uh, phase two and the consultation process happening and then moving uh, until April where the, the Sofia conference will uh, happen. Um, and I'm curious to hear from your side, being a part of hosting this conference, uh, what has been important for, for this? I think a um, lot of it has been described already. We had done sitting here from the researchers team, indeed already right away when we say goodbye uh, today at the end of the conference. There is a small team of researchers and keynote listeners who will work already today afternoon to take forward the things. Over the weekend, the researchers will continue, and next Monday, the steering committee of the sixth cycle of the structured dialogue will meet in Brussels to try to formulate the final um, wording for the questions for the consultation. This is the process what will continue. At the same time, at the time we say goodbye to the participants of the youth conference, there are directors generals responsible for youth um, who have joined us already, many of them in the room with us today. Welcome to you as well. We're going to continue with the meeting of Director Generals on Youth uh, today afternoon and tomorrow. This is not exactly the follow-up meeting of the conference, uh, in the sense that, of course, it is a lot inspired by the topics from the conference as well. And uh, the main essence or the main outlook will be the future outlook of the youth policy. So in this sense, these events are also connected to each other, but it is not directly the next step in that sense, but very interlinked and hopefully bringing another enriching dimension to the discussions here. From there on, uh, we will have the consultation. But I would also say that, uh, indeed, this is... This is a, the conference hosted in Estonia, but the all work put into that comes actually from the uh, small consortium, small group of institutions and people, first of all the people, from Estonia, Bulgaria, Austria, from European Commission and European Youth Forum, who of course works in the national uh, youth councils and national working groups. And this is the work that will continue, which means that, of course, on 31st of December, we're going to firework not only for the 2017, but also, of course, for us in Estonia, we're going to firework for our first ever presidency. But we will continue. Just there is somebody else sitting on the driver's seat, and that's going to be uh, Bulgaria then. So you said a few words on the, like the coming process from now on leading up to that the conference. What do you see being promising? Many things. I think um, there is a lot on content. Again, if we talk about the topics that have been raised in this conference, that is all what we need to really now find good ways to work on. Um, I would still very much um, like to work on diversity in the whole dialogue as well. Because I think, when I, when I think to this conference as well, it has been really enriching. It's, it's always interesting to talk to the people you know as well already. You always find new things. And at the same time, think on top of that, uh, the things that are said yesterday by 11-year-old Gustav Paul or yesterday by our president, these two are just, as one example, the people I don't meet every day. And it has been really cool to listen to what their ideas are. Maybe the talking to the people you don't know so well is also more unpredictable. <laughs> and I think this is something which needs to be taken forward, that we also really try to take forward to whom do we talk in this um, dialogue process. And I would very much support uh, to one of the ideas which was said here before, that to have a conference like that, of course, this is to prepare the good consultation, and then the second conference, and then third conference, hopefully, as the aim of the sixth cycle, to give a good contribution to the uh, EU, next EU youth strategy. But to be honest, to, make, to have a consultation and make a contribution to the uh, youth strategy, you don't need to organize a conference with almost 300 people. There are other ways to do it. So for me, the main value, or, or even I would say the, the, the very important value is also everything what we can take 
after the conference with us and really work on the things from all the angles what, what we can. So I think let's not forget about that this is not only to feed into the process of the sixth cycle, but it's also really to work on all the different levels. So we have influential people in this room on both local, national and European level. Actually, yes. And I really like that what is promising is that uh, I hear less and less uh, these kind of rhetorics, which is uh, something which I would call also is very mainstream. Somebody mentioned today that let's move on from the mainstream uh, rhetorics that, uh, yes, government should do this and that, and yes, young people should be more active. True. What do we do about it? I think this is what is promising to, to really try to find the good answers and, and go on beyond what we know and what we have already. Thank you very much, Julie. And then, Peter, uh, in April, a lot of these people will also be joining the SOFIA conference. And uh, what is the focus of that conference? Uh, yes. First, we have an answer of the question, what's next? Bulgaria is next. <laughs> and uh, definitely, I just wanted to um, uh, very much echo what Uli said that, I mean, first of all, the process didn't start with that conference. It started a year ago with our initial meetings with the European Steering Committee, and I'm looking at our friends from Austria, the Commission, and the European Youth Forum, because it's a very uh, joint process that uh, we have been lucky that we really brought together so amazing and inspiring people that really wanted to do something inspirational, something practical, and something meaningful for the young people in Europe. And uh, definitely this is... Uh, uh, and thank you to the Commission, actually, that uh, they really took on board uh, the idea of reshaping the structure dialogue and really uh, changing uh, the things that have been done so far because we have listened very carefully what the previous trio uh, shared with us and we really tried to build on this because they definitely have achieved a lot and uh, having this unique and luxury moment to really shape and develop a strategy that really responds to the needs and uh, to the wishes of the young people in Europe and even beyond. I think it's a very uh, special momentum that really we need to take on board and uh, be cautious that uh, being here only 300, we have 100 million more in, uh, in Europe that we should uh, somehow reach them out and really uh, answer their needs as well. And uh, this strategy should not be only to the policy makers. This strategy should be really to the young people because they're the ones who will be implementing to the youth organi organizations, but also to the unorganized youth. Because sometimes we forget that there are other people who for some reason didn't join any organization. And uh, some other who feel some, some kind of, uh, with fear opportunities, marginalized young people. And I think this is very, crucial moment to remind ourselves that we serve uh, to them as well. And uh, Bulgaria is, uh, is a beautiful country and we are very much looking forward to welcome everyone in April without snow, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, really to have uh, interesting discussions. And I here would like to highlight one very new element in the structure dialogue, and this is the researchers. I think it's very important that really brought uh, this, uh, this element to the, to the structure there because this was something that we figured out in the European Steering Committee that this is expertise that we don't have, but we would like to really um, have a meaningful outcome of the different discussions and consultations that will be happening. And thanks so much to the partnership for joining us in that uh, joint a journey that we're going to have uh, to the, the end of the Austrian presidency as well. And uh, hopefully to have a very practical outcome out of the, of the SOFIA conference. And it's not, a, it's not a secret, we are expecting to have up to 10 youth goals that are designed based on the uh, consultations in the blue sky thinking in Estonia. And uh, continuing further in Bulgaria with uh, uh, concrete very much defining and harvesting of the, of the different discussions. Uh, and here together, of course, with the Commission, with the Austrian colleagues, with the Estonian colleagues and the European Youth Forum, again, we're going to be very much looking forward to the discussions in Bulgaria. And uh, yes, see you soon. Thank you. Just quickly again on the, the potential you see in that conference happening in, in Bulgaria. You said something about the uh, youth goals. Yes. Uh, 
definitely we are very much looking to have this up to 10 new goals depending on the on the people who will be at the conference they are the ones who will decide how many there will be but really uh, having these youth goals then we're gonna kindly uh, share that with the commission and hopefully they will be very much uh, taken into account in the drafting of the European strategy that will be uh, out after the Sofia Youth Conference and then during the Austrian Youth Conference we'll be very much seeing how we're gonna actually implement these youth goals. And I think it's very important that although some of the things might not be fitting directly to the youth goals. I think it's very important that the discussions are still going because I'm sure that there will be different stakeholders that will take on board uh, the different topics that have been popped up from the different consultations and implement them in, in various fields, if, uh, if not uh, per se in the European strategy, but in other policy documents. And definitely uh, we as representative of, uh, of the institutions, we listen carefully and uh, you can be assured that uh, we, we will definitely use them and uh, trying to implement them not only international level but really going to the local uh, and national level. So I'm referring to what you also said earlier that this is happening on many different uh, levels and in different uh, paths. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone of you have a like, final remark of what's important to remember for the coming months? Uh, I just wanted to highlight, and now going back to the, to the national working groups on the structured dialogue, uh, I think it's very important because after the conference then we'll get, we're going to have the, the, the questions and then uh, you have the, 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 the initiative to start the, the consultations. And I would really uh, kind to invite you to really go further, trying to reach out the not usual suspects that you are reaching out, going to the local level, going to the different small cities in your countries and trying to engage more and more young people and really listen what they want to say. Uh, be creative, be ambitious and really let's uh, have uh, kind of rich outcomes of the national consultations. Thank you very much, Peter. I can only say that um to our first reflection, so the SIG cycle has kicked off really well. It has been uh, quite a lot of effort uh, behind uh, with many, many stakeholders. And here we see that the member states' representatives and the representatives of young people involved in this process, we think really in a similar direction. And I think this is what we have to keep. Maybe not often or not always our ideas how exactly to do it uh, are the similar. But that's fine as well. Let's try to find the ways to do it. Uh, so the cycle has kicked off really well. Um, and yeah, we are in a dark room like that. But like one of my colleagues said, we clearly see the light in the end of the tunnel. And that light, of course, is the Bulgaria and Austria taking the cycle further. So good luck for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just one. Quick thing. Uh, last word from you, Peter. And I promise that it's going to be the last one. I really want to give a round of applause to the European Steering Committee. Can, can we kind of ask them to stand up? Because, I mean, these are the people who are very much behind the scene, then together with the Estonian colleagues and the Austrian colleagues. So if you need anything, they're there to hear you. Thank you very much for your effort, and thank you for uh, taking the stage. And remember your phone, Peter. Else I'll steal it. So, what's next? It's a it's a question like you wherever you meet uh, on the streets <laughs> now you're like what's next? What's, yes, next? what's next? And you just always hand it over like what's yeah. next? What's next? next? What's yeah. Next? Wow, what a what a what a ride it has been, and uh, maybe uh, I also want to kind of share that it's been really great uh, working. I think like your great partic participants, like uh, what we just heard, uh, what the uh, word uh, popped by, but uh, the content has been created by you. And uh, I'm very happy that you joined this uh, joyride because I'm sure that uh, you all enter with different expectations. And, and if you had previous experiences of conferences, then you have with a certain mindset. And also, 
being this uh, unknowing or frustration, uh, I, I think there's always something coming out of that. That has been my experience working a lot with participation myself and especially uh, bringing also creative and different ways of expressing. I think uh, sometimes we spend too much in our heads, but also what happens when we talk to each other from a different place and, and try to give hands also to shaping what we are doing. So I really uh, am thankful for myself. Uh, it's, we are still uh, continuing with the conference, but just to also, I wanted to share it from my side. I don't know if you want to say. Yeah, from my side as well, it's been um, actually really amazing to see how you worked, and especially yesterday, um, I was a bit uh, worried or worrying, like sending you off and then seeing that you actually went to working group rooms and you were like, you went where it makes sense for you to be. So uh, um, yeah, I'm a bit proud of you of actually grabbing that opportunity and making the most of it. And uh, even though there might be some of you that were floating a bit more around, that's, uh, that's also completely all right. Sometimes uh, things take a bit more time to digest or find its way. So uh, just encouraging you to continue the, the great work and I, I I sense the dedication to what you do, so, so thank you for that. Yeah, what I'm taking with me is um, this, this development of the things, because maybe, I, I don't know, at some point it seems that we're just playing, you know, we're being creative, we're putting boxes, we're using colors, markers, papers, and all that. But one of the sudden, with this, with our creative expression, with artwork, we're actually working on the content as well. So we have been using different tools, different ways of expressions, different channels, but still discussing, still using the dialogue as one of the main source how we can move a step forward. Still, we have the outcomes that are going to fit into the guiding questions, that are going to open up the consultations. So for sure, for me, I'm the most inspired by this and how this transition or development actually has been um, happening here. And um, yeah, I'm taking this to the next step, to Bulgaria and then to Austria. Um, so for me as well, this, this was a powerful experience, I would say. And it still continues. Yes. We have uh, something uh, great, which is like coffee break. Great coffee break, yeah? And it's, uh, I feel like it's like this final business time. You know, like if you still, you know, need to grab somebody like I haven't really touched, touched you, and I'll talk to you. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's been several. Each other. That's, that's been also. several days already. So head, hand, and heart, right? So. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yes. So this is this final business time for for coffee, and and later on for lunch. Uh, what else to say before we go to coffee break? Uh, well, yes, we are looking for tweets. Indeed. Yeah. As you know, uh, later on the commissioner is going to join us. Uh, and of course, you're all very much invited to pose the questions. What would you like to ask a commissioner? So please share everything on tweets. We're going to gather those questions. We're going to ask commissioner what is his thoughts on the topics that you're proposing. So use this opportunity during the coffee break as well. Yes, so we will gather here again at uh, 11.30, half past 11, and uh, let's see if we can make a collective exercise of being here because uh, the commissioner is on stage right away. Yeah. Enjoy the coffee and the business making. Yeah. Welcome back and uh, kindly ask you to find a place to sit. We're going to have uh, our yeah, final closing session of this conference. Many little elements still to come. Maybe starting from the back with a family photo, getting ready shortly for that. Also giving over the floor to the next organizers. But before that, uh, I'm very happy to invite on stage uh, Commissioner uh, Mr. Dibor Navracis, who is responsible for European, uh, for, at the Commission for Education, Culture, Youth and Sport. I hope you had a lovely uh, travel to Estonia and uh, willing to share what is on your mind and then later engage with uh, a short uh, 
conversation with our delegates as well. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear delegates. Let me first thank all those who have helped make this European Youth Conference a success. We just had a short conversation before the closing session, and uh, from what I've heard, there were intense discussions, good networking, and I hope you also had some fun and snow. You and all the other young people across Europe are the ones who will shape the future of the European Union. Events like this conference are an important space where your voice can be heard and where your ideas about the Europe of tomorrow meet those of decision makers. I want to encourage you to continue these discussions you have been having here. Take them back to your homes, your communities. We need to have a broad debate on what we want the Europe of the future to be. And we need to keep coming together to get to know each other better, to develop a deeper understanding of our backgrounds and points of view. This is crucial at a time when new divisions are opening up within our societies, divisions that I find deeply troubling. I believe young people can be the strongest force in building bridges. This includes bridges between East and West, both within the EU and with our neighboring regions. To support this, I intend to set up a European youth community, European Youth Together, as we call it. This will be a network promoting regional partnerships, building on our Erasmus program, and running close cooperation with young people from both Eastern and Western European countries. This network would organize exchanges, hand out scholarships, promote training, for instance, for youth leaders, and allow young people themselves to set up joint projects. Building personal networks and friendships is today perhaps more important than ever. Young people have a big role to play in this, and it is encouraging to see how many of you are willing to engage with others. The European Solidarity Corps is a great example of this. Almost one year after the European Commission launched this initiative, more than 39,000 young people have signed up to volunteer, take up a traineeship or a job for solidarity. I'm proud of this. It shows that many young people are willing to offer company to the lonely, that they are ready to support refugees coming to Europe or to help communities in other ways. And I'm sure you have a lot of other ideas for how young people can get involved in building more cohesive societies and what they want the European Union to be and what they want it to do. From a recent Eurobarometer survey, we know that young Europeans see education and skills, the protection of the environment and migration issues as top priorities. They told us that the environment must be preserved for them to enjoy and that they want a diverse and fair society. But there are certainly other issues you want to raise with us. We want to hear from you. Let us know what matters most to you and how Europe can help in your daily life and in your aspirations. The structured dialogue that you are taking part in has an important role to play in this. Over the last few days, you started to discuss ways forward under the motto, Youth in Europe, what's next? A debate that will continue at national levels until the end of next year. These national exercises, managed by the 28 national working groups, are fundamental for the success of the entire structured dialogue. I would like to see the role of this activity recognized in our future dialogue framework. Without prejudging the outcome of the consultations, I would like to take this opportunity to commend the national working groups for their important work. At the same time, 
Let's also be a bit self-critical and look at how we can make this dialogue even better. How can it become even more relevant for more young people across Europe? How can this dialogue reach out further? Are there parts of it we can do better? How can we use new tools or ways of working? And what can the European Union do to help make it happen? The Commission is preparing proposals for the future EU youth strategy and we will present them before summer 2018 so that ministers can discuss and adopt a new framework for youth cooperation by the end of next year. We need frank and direct input from all sides. In this context, we will indeed be looking at how the structural dialogue has been working so far and how it could be improved further. Outreach and diversity are key parameters for success because without these, it cannot be truly representative or relevant to all young people across Europe. Dear all, I want to see a Europe in which people can take control of their lives and realize their dreams and ambitions. I want to see a Europe that empowers young people, that enables them to become independent, active citizens. I want to build this Europe with you. All young people must be heard, and all young people must have a chance to contribute as we shape the society of the future. There's a lot that each young person can do, whether it is engaging in their local communities or using their voice when the big democratic decisions are taken, for example, in the upcoming European Parliament elections in 2019. Europe is what you make it. As your commissioner, I can help open up opportunities, but you have to take them. And what an exciting time this is to do so. Thank you very much. Yes, please. And if I have my colleague Thea also joining us on this couch. Oops. Couch surf. Good. So if the mind, we are using the microphone as, uh, to make sure that it's heard as well. So, so welcome. So, uh, we're mostly actually curious about many questions that are coming from there. So, we have been tweeting a lot, so we come to that very shortly, and uh, I know Thea has already ready with that. But maybe just to um, little bit build on your speech uh, just now, and um, I know that this year is also this year of listening that uh, is part of... Uh, and it's, I think, important uh, part of uh, creating this strategy also together. But uh, you spoke a little bit in, in your speech, but I'm still curious, if you look at this year of listening, what have you heard from young people that somehow has really striked you and, and really make you think and ponder what this actually means? Well, I, uh, I've heard a, a lot of very important and... Uh, and uh, relative opinions. But probably the most striking for me is how difficult it is to reach out to those young people who are, who are not part of a system. I mean, not part of organized groups or NGOs or who are not active at the moment. How can we make them more active? How can we channel them into, into the mainstream society, because I think those people are, are the most endangered people uh, from the point of view of marginalization, or radicalization, or, or, or even unemployment, and all the other social uh, challenges. So my, uh, my difficulty, or, or, or my, uh, my, my most sensitive point is to, to find those channels which uh, lead me to those young people who are out of the circle, I would say. 
And indeed, this was also the topic that participants of this conference highlighted. Uh, most of them are representative of youth organizations, different institutions or ministries. And I would say that they all kind of agree that they have to reach out to those people as well. But then again, here we have people who already are active and a lot of them are very much aware that current EU youth strategy is coming to an end and that we are in the process preparing a new one. And those are the people who want to be very much engaged. Um, so they were tweeting a lot about the questions, how they can contribute to it, how can they make sure that their opinion is going to be taken on board, how is the future EU youth strategy not only going to be about youth, but how can young people actually co-create it and potentially also co-managing it. Um, how can they be involved in the governance of the future EU youth strategy as well? Can you share some of your reflections on this? I think, I think the success of, of the future EU youth strategy is, is strictly upon, is, is, uh, is up to us. I mean, if we can open up platforms for discussions in every level of, of uh, the decision-making system. I mean, at, uh, in local communities, also in, in regional, national, and of course at, at European uh, levels, uh, we, can, we can channel in the most relevant op uh, opinions of that. But of course, to, to make a youth strategy is always a tricky exercise because you know, there's, there's the eternal debate if, if the youth policy is a one single separate policy among other policies or is it a horizontal one mm -hmm. where you have to, to, to show up the youth element in every uh, policy areas. And I think uh, this debate is still undecided. I, I don't think it can be decided in, in the near future. So we have to combine these two approaches. We have to, to, to elaborate some specific youth policy issues and, and approaches, but at the same time, we have to ensure that, uh, that your interests, your specific points is uh, visible in, in every policy areas. And what are the most important policy areas for you? Because uh, uh, I think, um, the, the specificity of, of, of the youth you know, as, a, as an age group or, or as a, a, a slice of a society is that uh, you are at the beginning of, of your own autonomous life, both economically and politically and socially in societal terms. So we have to identify those policy areas uh, which can help you the most in starting uh, your autonomous and responsible uh, life uh, career. Yes, and um, within those areas, young people uh, or all of the participants here at the conference listed a lot of topics. Some of them are really cross-cutting and they were emphasizing the importance of cross-sectorial approach when addressing the topics of young people or youth policy, as we say it. And they are specifically uh, mentioning also social rights and how can we make sure that EU and EU policies, not necessarily only EU youth policy, it's ensuring uh, social rights in the community where, where we're living as well. We know there are a lot of things happening with European social pillar right now uh, in the European Commission. Could you maybe share? Well, let me turn it back and I will be very unpopular probably in this. <laughs> That, did you speak about the social obligations as well? Um, if you because want I think to be more specific, a, then it's yeah. It's an often, often neglected but very important interaction between mm -hmm. rights and obligations. Mm -hmm. We are a part of a community. We are a part of a community of generations. So you also have obligations, not only rights, as, uh, as me also have obligations to you and for other uh, generations as well. So uh, I would prefer a, a discussion when we, when we can talk about both sides of community lives, rights and obligations. What is your offer for the older generations? And, and we can clarify what is the offer of the older generations to you. And we can, we can, we can strike a good deal in that, I think. But uh, I'm, I'm really on the autonomous life 
side of this approach. So I think uh, for me, the most fundamental social rights is to help you to pursue your independent, autonomous, entrepreneurial life, to be a, a responsible citizen of a democratic society and to be a successful entrepreneur in economy. And uh, I, I will do everything I can to, to support you in, in uh, creating a, uh, a favorable atmosphere for, for young entrepreneurs, for, for young voters, for young politicians, for, for young community animals, if it's not uh, insulting you. But I think that's the that's Aristotelian uh, phrase is probably the most important um, for the future uh, European societies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious uh, to hear that um, you, you tell a lot about, and we, we also said that, uh, that this, um, how can I put it? Um, like, it, it's about listening and incorporating and doing your best. And sometimes I, I kind of feel that these are also very big words. Like, can you tell more, like, if this group of people have actually created a lot of content and great work, we have heard about it. So, how can it actually becomes quite tangible that, I don't know, if, if we could have a conversation in five years here, you could actually look back and say that you see this, what actually has been taken forward and it started here in Tallinn, for example. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a soft policy. It's a soft mm -hmm. policy area, which means that not only the measures are, are usually softer than, for instance, uh, defense policy or or, uh, or internal security, but also our methods must be softer than other uh, policy areas. So uh, while youth policy, education policy, sports uh, and culture are part of exclusive competence of the member states, we can make a difference at European level, but uh, strictly based on, on, on cooperation, on uh, nudging member states to the wished direction. So that's why it is very important uh, to have a consultation with you, because uh, knowing your aspirations, your uh, wishes, uh, I can work together with member states, uh, ministers and stakeholders and trying to, to push them or, or push together in a direction which is uh, favorable for you. So it's not, it's not very spectacular. It's not, it's not a revolutionary mm. one day for another and then we are making breakthroughs. But uh, we try to shape the agenda which gives um, um, a better perspective for you, uh, for your further life. So what would maybe be your recommendations to the member states? Because here in the audience, of course, we have representatives of the ministry as well. And we know that we want to build dialogue and cooperation. So also structural dialogue, it's happening at different levels from local, regional, national to European one. What would be maybe your view or recommendation how we can make this cooperation work? Uh, how course, can yeah. member states play more important role in working with young people? and youth organizations in this field? Yeah, I'm not allowed to give them recommendations. A I'm just an equal, I, usually, I, usually, I usually identify myself as a 29th Minister mm -hmm. for Youth in the European Union. But, uh, but my advice, yeah, my advice would be that be as informal as you can. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the death of the structural dialogue is formality. So if we, if we just do it uh, because for the minutes or for, for the events, and uh, uh, so it will die out. Uh, and I think that's, that's why it is important to, to, to bear always in mind that there are young people beyond beyond the reach of, of those organizations, which has to be represented somehow. So we have to be informal. I know I'm, I'm just getting older and older, so that's, it's, it's even more difficult to, to, be, uh, to be informal. But as a university teacher, it, it can help. Uh, uh, I mean, my previous experiences can help how to, how to find um, a common voice with young people, because uh, 
mutual understanding, probably that's the most important. And, uh, and it's even more difficult now. You're, you're the generations of smartphones, of, 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 uh, of, um, of uh, social media and uh, a different kind of communication, while I'm um, a member of a generation which is predated uh, just before the, these digital um, devices and technologies. And I think it, it influences even the usage of the language and the way of thinking. So that's why we need informality to, to have uh, chats, to have discussions, to, 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 to understand each other. Mm -hmm. And I believe this conference has created a, a very good start for that. But I'm also very curious, some other really yes. tricky, good questions on the Twitter yes, wall. Yes, this is why I'm using this. One of the topics that was highlighted during this conference was about mental health of young people. Um, young people are facing a lot of precarious situations. They are uncertain about their future, and this, of course, influences their mental health as well. So one very concrete question that we got is, what role do you see? youth workers playing in supporting young people's mental health in future Europe. How can we as volunteers, as youth workers, help young people in this area as well? Very good question. Uh, I think empower, empower them, those people in danger, and, and give them optimism and, and support. I don't think this period would be more insecure than, than other previous periods in human history. We're just getting more and more sensitive. So we have to give them more strength. We have to give them more moral support or, or factual support and make them more optimistic. And I, we have to be optimistic because, of course, the future is always uncertain. But, uh, but that's the faith we, which can keep us uh, as a human and as a community being. And I'm sure that many people in the room um, are also an example of this optimistic approach of reaching out, dedicating time, and just bringing this energy to the others as well. Yeah, so mental health was one uh, topic that popped out. out. So I, I pick, pick another one, which was uh, mm -hmm. also like agriculture. So we also got that question. Yeah. Yes. So why does Europe spend so much money for farming and so few for youth policies? Or why, why don't we combine the two? Mm -hmm. Why don't we use some of the farmers' money or agriculture's money to, to boost the development, regional development of rural and remote regions. One of the biggest problems of contemporary Europe is the so-called brain drain or the depopulation of the poorer regions in Europe. So why don't we use, and agriculture is, a, is an obvious uh, form of activity there, or can be an obvious form of activity there. And I think uh, high level education, and agriculture are not, uh, not uh, antagonistic terms, so we can combine the two and we can make those regions more attractive by combining those monies. But as far as I know, there will be a, a fundamental reform of the agricultural policy in the next multi-annual financial framework. So those who are concerned about the free spending of, uh, of agricultural policy, there might be some better times for that. I, I, it's, it will be based more on, on performance and, and uh, reaching the targets. So your advice would be also to combine maybe funding opportunities? Well, yes, uh, exactly. The youth policy is a, is a brilliant example because, uh, as I just mentioned, it has an horizontal dimension. So what I would like to do is to talk to other commissioners to give me some money. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody in the room would very highly appreciate you this. You can support me. Yeah, you can support me. <laughs> And I will be a rich man, and, but some of the monies can go to you as well. I mean, um, so we can, we can harness the synergies, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in vocational education and training, also in agriculture, in regional development. Why don't we concentrate on future European societies? And that's you. 
uh, education policy is, is a primarily a, a future policy. Youth policy is a future policy. Sports policy for me is a part of culture and education, so it's a future policy. But we also, but, but we can use also other policy instruments as well in in, uh, in industrial policy, entrepreneurship, housing policy, and all those areas which can help you uh, to develop a, a meaningful uh, life career. And I, yeah, you want to. No comment, and I'm just curious if there's uh, one uh, final question for a commissioner because we have some. We have a question. Um, uh huh, okay. It's actually commenting on the agriculture still, so. <laughs> I cannot see very. Con Let's see, maybe also yeah. together what's happening so you can also read what uh, has been commented. We have a question. How can you ensure that digitalization will not exclude youth that don't have technical, technical access or that are facing difficulties? Here we are using mm -hmm. uh, a lot of benefits of the technology, of digital tools. How can we make sure that this is accessible for everybody or that we provide support or maybe provide other opportunities. In, in the Commission's Digital Single Market Program, there will be a special chapter for, for full coverage uh, in the EU. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I know that uh, the Commissioner responsible for Agriculture and Rural Development, Phil Hogan, has uh, plans to, to make a, a green internet or something like that, which. Uh, which is targeted at uh, covering uh, those, um, those uh, rural areas uh, where the coverage is now is, is very poor. I think that's the future. It's, it's just like the, it was the, the railways 150 years ago or the highways 50 years ago. Now contemporary highways are, are the internet uh, coverage. So that's, it's not a question that uh, we have to have uh, full coverage very soon in Europe. Thank you very much. Will you be around for some time today? Yes. yes? So for informal uh, talks, I believe. But before you go off the stage, is there something else you would like to address right now, right here? Be optimistic and uh, let's, let's work together. I think that's a, it's a good deal and we can work together so we can be successful in the future. So that Thank sounds you. like an invitation, so I hope it will continue also along the whole process of structured dialogue. Thank you very much for joining Indeed. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, part of this closing part will be uh, a family photo that I hope that you will be also joining us for it as well. But uh, we are slowly coming to end in this space, in this time. And... Uh, Part of that is also like giving this space away in a way. So I would like to uh, invite here on stage Ivo. I, I see he's already waiting. And uh, it's, you are the one we've been waiting for in a way. <laughs> So last time in Malta, I had a problem with that, so this time it's fixed. Anyways, honorable members of the commission, dear friends, colleagues, fellow delegates, with a very special shout out to our Eastern Partnership Youth organizers and fellow Europeans. When we are asked what comes next, it immediately reminded me the story on how after our re-independence we started to search for our Nokia. The Finns had it. We had to have it also. Some 20 plus years later, and I do not know if we found our Nokia, but we did find out that without our friends in Europe, we would not have had the time to even hunt for this mythical snark. We had the feeling of security that in this soul search, someone somewhere will look after us and helps us. And here I come to one of my very favorite quotes from our past president, Lennart Meri. Security is like virginity. You're either a virgin or you're not. 
You either have security or you don't. I think it is the leading question for nowadays youth, especially the part about security. Future does not seem to be as certain than it seemed to be some 15, 20 years ago. University education does not secure income. Becoming 25 or 30 still do doesn't seem to be a possible time to move out because housing prices skyrocket higher than skyscrapers. We know what are the things next in this list. But referencing back to, to President Kersti Kaljulaid's idea that echoed an amount of JFK in it, we should not expect that things are done for us. We have to contribute our own part. Being young just isn't and should not be enough. The discussion we have had in, the, in previous cycles and in the past days have been a small part of this contribution to the mechanisms that help us form a more secure future. This task continues in Bulgaria, where we start setting in motion the ideas that have echoed in these rooms. We have been lucky as Estonian National Youth Council that we have been able to work with structured dialogue in, in night national and now on the European level. I thank the Ministry of Education and Research for the ongoing principle that young people have to be behind the table when we decide the things about young people. I hope that Bulgarian presidency follows that line and takes Bulgarian National Youth Forum as a key partner for making sure that our next meeting rocks. So without further delays, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Raicha Raichev, member of the board of the National Youth Forum of Bulgaria, please. Hello there. So dear colleagues and friends across Europe and Eastern partnership countries. First of all, I would like to say a big thank of, of, for all of you for the amazing experience that we shared for the last three days. Since we are in the beginning of the sixth cycle of the structured dialogue, I have to admit that the Estonian hosts have set a brilliant start for our joint work in the current trio presidency. The topic of the cycle is youth in Europe, what's next? And that was the first success of the smooth work to the strong cooperation between the, between the members of the steering committee. I do believe that everyone enjoyed the conference and here is the place to hear how much we ap appreciate our experience here. As a courtesy of the Estonian hosts, we had the chance to take all the opportunities in, uh, for being in such empower empowering youth space and atmosphere. During the conference, we had the opportunity as well to discuss really major and important topics related to youth. But I'm also happy that we put on the table not so popular, but also important subjects. And one of them was the importance of the youth spaces in the community building process. Moreover, the youth spaces are crucial for providing us security, security, security environment where the young people could take, our, could take active part in the society as driving force for positive social change. And talking about social changes, we, we could all agree that we are living in really fast globalizing world. Um, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of major and intensive processes are becoming part of our lives. The incapability of the people to adapt often leads to misunderstandings and lack of inappropriate communication, which put in danger our security system, our social security system and rights. 
At the first day of the conference, we heard our personal and common stories. One of the highlights for me was the moment that we came to realization that our generation has as many opportunities as no other generation has ever had. But we experienced the biggest exclusion and lack of perspective. I stand behind Mr. Novracic and Ivo that we have to, as a young person, realize and steam our role fighting, countering the, the, the all challenges and threats that we are facing. And did you remember what the president of Estonia yesterday shared with us? Let me tell you. It's important for young people to be educated in a such a way not to be consumers, but to be contrib contributors. In addition, I would like to say, if we are contributors, then you have your own cause. And that's really what being a leader is, namely being part of cause greater than yourself. I strongly believe that our common causes are Firstly, to shape our new youth strategy in a way how it will respond to our need. And second of all, to continue standing and speaking up for more youth rights. Dear idea and call sellers, encouragers of positive mindsets, do you know what is coming next? Bulgaria is next. Follow the signs of the ancient peoples scattered in the layers of history. Unravel the secrets from the past concealed in the splendor of fabulous treasures. See how the legacy of the ancestors is kept in the spirit of a country. Live the history. Bulgaria, a discovery to share. Bulgaria will chair for first time the presidency one year after holding the European youth capital of the city of Varna. And trust me, the Bulgarian team in the face of the National Youth Council and the Ministry of Youth and Sports will also do their best in order to effectively contrib contribute to our common youth goals. Bulgaria, please stand up and wave to these awesome people in this room. (Applause) 
dear social innovators. If you want to be considered as the present and also as the future of Europe, we should think out of the box and act successively so that we can be sustainable over time. And you're going to ask me how we can achieve it. Actually, it is simple. To preserve the peace and to gain sustainability, we have to use the bottom-up approach and always to contribute in our local communities because they're the most valuable elements in our social engine. Let's together put some fuel in the engine, become an ambassador of the structured dialogue, take a hat, share the results from the conference, and spread the word that Bulgaria is next. <laughs> and you guys, you can take some hats from the Bulgarian delegation. And yeah, you can do it like that. So thank you for your attention. great to see this uh, spark of creativity certainly travels to Bulgaria, so I'm very happy about it. I'm, I'm <laughs> now we're looking hats. forward maybe with a bicycle ride and especially with these higher heels. Are you ready, uh, Thea, for doing I that? I am. I think it's going to be so exciting. Wow. <laughs> So, so I'm sure that uh, everybody, of course, nobody listens now just because everybody starts to put the yeah, head together. Put the head <laughs> yeah. But uh, great. So, so good luck. Yeah, great. So yeah, good luck to Bulgaria. It seems that you are ready, and we're happy to hand it over for you. And we would also like to say thanks and uh, close, because in just a few minutes we are ending uh, this European Youth Conference in Tallinn, and uh, then there will be a short you see everybody's, picture time. Uh, Everybody's putting yeah, it together. Yeah, it's not that interesting like <laughs> what I'm saying, so I think it's, okay. I think it's all right. We, we need the hats. Then we are really ready for the picture, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> so it's just a picture time yeah, uh, a preparation. Just a little chit-chat <laughs> So maybe, is it, uh, Bulgarian delegation, is there also like time how fast you should be kind of be ready to make it? Like one minute, two, three? So oh, so for some, like me, maybe. By the time you dream. make it to Sofia next year, it's uh, yeah. like folded in one minute. Yeah, like at the airport, you cannot uh, arrive without a hat, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody can leave with yeah. their hats on, ready. Yeah. It's not about batches, but it's hats now. Yeah, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah, some of them set it up already. Some of them are wearing it already. Very nice, indeed. And I'm sure there are some, I see also already some more creative ways of putting it together, which is totally <laughs> fine. I, I'm sure that there isn't the one solution. <laughs> Let's be open for di diverse perspectives <laughs> of how a sh hat should look like these days. <laughs> <laughs> more and more hats popping uh, up. Uh, Renik, I, I see you are not working on, uh, on putting <laughs> hat together. <laughs> Yeah, it's like. <laughs> so we're going to sail to Bulgaria, looks like. Hmm, like sailing hats. Yeah, with the weather like uh, today, it's not very warm, but, but it's meant for Sofia anyway, so it's all good hands. Okay. While you're still doing the hats, I'll start with the boring stuff, <laughs> the practical <laughs> announcements, and then we get to the more fun stuff of clapping Great. and rounding off afterwards. <laughs> so uh, just here, half past 12, lunch will be served for all of you in the hallway, and I understand that some of you will be taking off, but there's also uh, some DJs that are staying for the meeting up in the Indian Hall uh, starting this afternoon. Remember a few days ago, uh, we said that the, some of your pictures from Instagram would be uh, drawn on a piece of canvas with this spray printer. There are now three canvases that have been spray printed and they will be exhibited at the, at the hallway. So have a look at them before you um, take off. 
And then it's time to thank people. Yes? I mean, we have been quite a lot on stage, but this is not a, just a thanks to us. So many people have been involved in realizing this conference and making this come alive. So I think we should uh, do uh, a few thank you words. And I'm going to start uh, by thanking each and every one of you, taking your time to travel to Tallinn and be here for the full conference. Both youth delegates, ministry representatives, representatives of international, cross-national organizations, and other representatives. So give yourself a big, warm round of applause. And a huge part of realizing this uh, conference and also setting the, the frame for the structured dialogue process in this sixth cycle has been the European Steering Committee. So both the three trio presidencies, Estonia, Austria and Bulgaria, the European Commission and the European Youth Forum. So can you please all stand up and we will give you a big hand. Both on the content side and on the practical side of realizing this event, both with evening events, food, all practicalities, making sure it will be picked up in the airport and so on, that's been quite a huge member of organizers. So um, I think we should start by thanking the Ministry of Education and Research here in Estonia. And um, we have this huge Excel document stating all the people that are involved uh, and contact numbers of like who to contact for this and this. And it's a Google Sheet, so you can just change things, everybody. And suddenly, uh, uh, at the name of Ellen, which works in the Ministry of uh, Education and Research and is part of the presidency, suddenly her role changed to being in charge of everything. <laughs> so uh, Ellen, please stand up, and I think we should start by giving you a, a warm hand. You've done a huge effort in realizing this conference, and I think also you haven't been alone. You also have colleagues from the ministry, and I also think you should uh, rise up um, and let's give them a hand as well. Ooh. Other organizers as part of that is also under the Ministry of Education and Research. We have the Estonian Youth Work Center uh, on the practical side, Music Case has taken care of the venues that will uh, be been artists and digital designers making the identity of this conference, Kinet Management taking care of all uh, the technical stuff together with uh, the Estonian National Broadcasting Team and all the tech crew down there and also the Estonian National uh, Youth Council has been a part of realizing this and bringing people making social media. So all at once, uh, these people stand up and let's give them a hand. They are, they are all working, as you see. <laughs> <They're> all working. 